this is great. Bill O'Reilly did a talking points memo last night, and he went after Stephen Colbert in a hilariously ridiculous way. Well, right on cue, another disgraceful exhibition. After their basketball team won the national championship, some students at the University of Connecticut rampaged, causing destruction and putting other students and police at risk. 35 people arrested, 20 of them UConn students. At the University of Kentucky, which lost the game, a similar scene. Mindless vandalism, contempt for authority, 18 people hurt, multiple arrests. There is no political component involved. The mayhem is happening because of a breakdown of respect for property and authority. The main driver of the destructive mindset is grievance and entitlement. USA is now being portrayed by powerful people as an unfair country that oppresses minorities, women, the poor, and so on. That message is sinking in, thus disrespect is rising. The primary grievance right now is alleged inequality. Progressives selling the myth that folks cannot get a fair shake in America because the system is rigged against most citizens. The left-wing media legitimizes that nonsense. And one of the biggest mouthpieces for the progressive movement is Stephen Colbert. Only about a million people watch his late-night program at 11.30, but he is the darling of the far-left Internet, which rhapsodizes over him. Recently, Colbert mocked me on the subject of inequality. O'Reilly knows the source of our decline. Why is our nation in decline? Tonight, I can give you this. Equality is what is hurting President Obama. The left has seized that word, equality, to push its progressive agenda. We now have income equality, marriage equality, gender equality, and on and on and on. Yes, income, marriage, gender, on and on and on. And yes, those last three don't mean anything, but they don't mean anything equally. And Bill laid out why fighting for equality is pointless. The truth is there will never be equality in this world. It's impossible. An opium-laced dream. Yes. I believe that's what Dr. King was talking about in his I have an opium-laced dream speech. Ah, but Mr. Colbert is a deceiver. I strongly believe in fighting for equality and also believe institutional bias should be against the law. What I oppose is government trying to impose equality because every human being is different. Maybe Colbert should take a look at China and the former Soviet Union to see just how the position of equality really works. Right, right. China and the Soviet Union are examples of places that tried to fight inequality. Those are some of the most unequal places. Are you kidding me? You want to talk about places that actually try to fight inequality? How about Denmark or Sweden or Norway or Iceland or Finland or Greenland or Britain in some cases and France in some in some cases? Yeah, those are the places that actually try to fight inequality. And guess what? They are the happiest places in the world. Literally, that's not just my opinion. The World Happiness Index, it's a study that's released from the United Nations. Uh, I forget how often they do it, but always the Nordic region, the Scandinavian region, is number one in that area. You know, they have better healthcare systems, objectively speaking. They have higher uh, per capita income. I mean, you go down the list, better education systems. They are doing better than the United States is. That's not just an opinion. That is an objective, verifiable fact. But his idea is, and he's done this before with Cuba, too. Well, Cuba is more liberal than us, and Cuba is a fucking hellhole, so obviously uh, liberalism sucks. Well, Detroit, they elect Democrats, so obviously uh, Democrats suck because Detroit is a mess. No, you idiot. The reason why Detroit is in shitty condition is because right-wing policies sh uh, shipped out all the middle-class jobs, all the, f the GM factory jobs there, and then it went to hell. Doesn't matter if you elect Democrats, Republicans, fascists, or communists in the area. It's still going to be a hellhole because NAFTA shipped out all the fucking jobs. So it's right-wing policies that led to that. You know, Cuba's not actually liberal. They might say they're socialist on paper. They might say they're communist on paper or whatever it is. They're not actually that. Okay, the more left wing places in the world, the social democracies have better systems. But O'Reilly 
it tries to slam Stephen Colbert. First of all, the whole connection that he makes, did you notice all of his tremendous leaps of logic? He's like, oh, here we are, NCAA riots. We got NCAA riots and vandalism happening. Isn't that gross? Isn't that disgusting? And you can see his audience probably watching going, oh, I don't like that, Bill. I don't know. They better not come to my door. I got my shotgun now. And then he goes, well, then obviously, that's their, see, they have a grievance. The same thing as the grievance industry, which is the liberals' fault. So NCAA riots are connected to liberals, and liberals are connected to Stephen Colbert. So obviously, the NCAA riots are Stephen Colbert's fault. I rest my case. Bill, you look ridiculous. <laughs> There's a, there's a, fucking, how are you bringing politics into fucking NCAA riots and vandalism? Liberals and conservatives alike will look at that and go, nah, that's fucking stupid. Riding when you win or lose is like, what are you doing? Why are you breaking shit? Because of a fucking basketball game? Let me get this right. Because of a fucking college basketball game? Really? You guys got nothing better to do? Uh, it, well, you're fucking losers. He's connecting that to politics and then to Stephen Colbert. And look, uh, the funny thing is, uh, you know Colbert? did a good job in that segment because, number one, O'Reilly felt compelled to respond, okay? But then also, uh, he responded by admitting, quote, I believe in fighting for equality. All right, well, thank you, Bill. Then why are we having this conversation? Then why are you ranting against him? If you believe in fighting, uh, fighting for equality, okay, then join us. Join the equal pay fight. Let's get women to make uh, the exact amount of money as a man for the same work. Right now, they make between 90 or 93 cents, depending on what study you look at. Let's fight for uh, racial equality. You want to get on that page, too? Let's fight for equality in the healthcare system. Okay, you want to you do that? What do you, you want Medicare for all, Bill? Let's go. You want equality, right? Come join the fight, buddy. We're waiting for you. Oh, you don't want those things, do you? See, what Bill O'Reilly does is he tries to create a straw man of liberals. And uh, he actually argues that and he goes on to say it, I had to cut it out for time reasons, but he goes on to say that, well, look, we believe in equality of opportunity. You guys believe in equality of results. But that is not the case. We actually believe in equality of opportunity, okay? Nobody believes in equality of results. It's you guys who aren't in favor of either. Yeah, you don't want equality of results, but you also don't want equality of opportunity. Why? And how do I know that? Because you always, you guys, the Republicans, always vote to cut funding for public schools. They do it all the time. Okay, that, that is an example of you not giving equal opportunity. Okay, when you cut uh, the social safety net, when you cut food stamps, you're not giving equal opportunity. It's hard to learn when you don't have a full stomach. It's hard to work when you don't have a full stomach. Okay, uh, you know how I know you're not in favor of equal opportunity? You don't want a full-time job to pay enough money for somebody to survive. You know, the Republicans have completely blocked raising the minimum wage, and especially raising the minimum wage to a living wage of $12 an hour. That You're not in favor of equal opportunity if you're fighting the idea that somebody should earn a living if they work full-time. And we can go on and on. I mean, the issues go on and on. Education, same thing. You know, we have over a trillion dollars in student loan debt. What do uh, the right-wingers want to do? Nothing. They don't want to reform the system. They don't want to make it so that we have universal education, for example, that our tax dollars fund that instead of, I don't know, funding war and all this other ridiculous shit. So don't tell me you're in favor of equal opportunity. You're not in favor of equal opportunity. You pretend like you are because it sounds good as a talking point. But on paper, when it comes to the policies you're in favor of, you're not in favor of those things. And by the way, give up, son. You're attacking a satirist. You're attacking a comedian. And even when you're serious and he's joking, he still beat your ass into the ground.